Hello friends. Welcome to the Thinker Views podcast where we discuss the books we are reading. Today we are discussing a story based around one of the most well-known characters in the English reading world, Sherlock Holmes. Although Sir Arthur Conan Doyle passed away a long time ago, there are countless other authors who try to keep this great detective alive. Sherlock's character has been analyzed for a century now, and the analysts and the new authors have attributed a lot of virtues as well as vices to him that the original stories may not have talked about explicitly. For example, his addiction to drugs or his mental health problems. The character is fascinating in terms of his almost superhuman observation powers and so the modern readers of 21st century are always looking to get lost in the world of Sherlock Holmes with new adventures and new facets of his personality. He is also one of the most filmed characters with multiple TV series and films featuring him and Dr. Watson. Some of the latest adaptations that we have loved and shared with you on Thinker Views are American series Elementary, the British series Sherlock, and the films featuring Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law. While some of these adaptations are good and achieve success, a lot more fizz out and are buried under hundreds of other works of similar nature. To be successful, the story has to offer something new. So author Nancy Springer put her own twist on the Holmes family and started writing adventures for the youngest member of this gifted family, a girl called Enola Holmes. Spelt backwards, Enola is alone. In our pursuit of books for young readers, we came across this series and we tried the first book in this series called The Case of Missing Marquis. Now, this was published in 2007 and as the series became popular, there has been five books here which now are all tied together through a common cover page design. This first impression to the world of Enola Holmes in the paperback copy we have is all done in dark colors. It shows a young girl clad in black riding a bicycle and framed in a black background with a lot of items that you could either see as barriers or you could perceive them as pieces of art. While the book cover is minimalistic and elegant and in line of old European books, I think that if the color scheme was brighter and more vibrant, it will attract a lot of young adult browsers to pursue the adventure within. Let's now open this book and look at the story itself. Enola Holmes is 14 years old today. Like every young girl, she is very happy and is excited about her birthday presents. She would have been happier though if her mother would have given this presents to her personally and would have been there to wish her happy birthday rather than just leaving this presents. By next morning, it is rather clear that her mother Lady Eudoria Vernet Holmes has gone missing. Enola, for whom her mother is her only family member, is now getting worried and apart from her, the country house has only a couple called Lane who are housekeepers. All three of them start looking for Enola's mother while Enola also telegrams her brothers Mycroft and Sherlock who live in London. The brothers arrive in all haste when they receive the telegram, but they are very surprised to meet the sister they have not seen in last 10 years. You see, Mycroft has been sending money to make sure that Enola has governesses 
in getting an education at home to become a proper lady of the society. What they find is a wild child of 14 who is more interested in riding her bicycle and climbing trees to find bird nests rather than learn how to give tea parties while properly gowned. They obviously clash with their different viewpoints and eventually Enola figure out that she needs to get away. She finally starts to go through the gifts her mother left for her, looking for any messages and hidden ciphers, and escapes her family home of Ferndale Hall. Her plan is to travel to London with the money her mother left her, live there independently as a grown woman, as a widow in fact, and search for her mother by herself. But as luck would have it, on her way to the train station, she comes across a mystery. The Marquis of Besselwither has gone missing. After all, detecting is in her blood, so Enola cannot resist the call of an adventure. She goes looking for Lord Tewkesbury and finds herself on a journey she could never have imagined. How she fares on this journey? We will leave for you to read the book and find out. My primary thoughts on reading the books were uh, how the biggest difference between contemporary and historical writing is that of perspective. When Sir Arthur Conan Doyle would have been writing about the London of his time and the Sherlock who lived in that London, he wouldn't have seen anything amiss. Neither would he have seen anything that was outside his realm. But here, the author has the advantage of looking back a hundred years and seeing the injustice and stigma of the way Victorians expected women to behave. There is a strong female-oriented narrative here that talks about Eudoria Holmes being a supporter of voting rights for women and sending her daughter to a common school rather than giving her education at home, as rich families were expected to do at that time. Today, these things have become part of our daily lives and we take these freedoms for granted. But in those days, this would have been a big deviation from the societal norms. But then Enola and Eudoria are also clever enough to turn these limitations into advantages. For example, the elaborate dressing requirements are great to hide their money and belongings and are also much more suitable to disguise themselves conveniently. If a woman is expected to wear a veil, she can also hide behind it. The author makes young Enola warm and funny and brave, but also nothing like the seemingly superhuman character of Sherlock, as Enola herself counts her accomplishments. I formed a mental list of my own accomplishments, able to read, write, and do sums, find birds' nests, dig worms, and catch fish, and ride a bicycle. It is a very humble description, but there is a lot more to Enola. She is an excellent hand at making caricatures and likes to make lists of questions to organize her thinking. I like the way she finds a title for what she wants to do in her future life. Not just a great detective that will solve great murders, but a perditorian from the Latin perditus, meaning lost. Perditorian is the one who divines that which is lost. Enola has read a lot of books at home and has that self-deprecating and critical tone for her own self and others that modern readers would like. While I wanted to believe that I would somehow persevere after my corporeal body was gone, 
I imagine that if it were so, I would have better things to do than to knock on furniture, ring bells, and shake tables. The hindsight in perspective applies not only to the characters but also to the setting. Although the London of original Sherlock Holmes stories was a metropolis filled with poverty and smog, Dr. Watson called it a cesspool, it was still a men's world mostly, an affluent men's world. Here, the author takes us through the docks and slums and shows us how old and weak had to survive here by crawling through their existence, literally. When Inola is growing up in her country house, she thinks of London as the city filled with palaces and light and luster, but the reality is quite different. When she sees London on her arrival, this is what she sees. All around me towered a man-made wilderness, buildings taller and more forbidding than any trees ever were. It was a grotesque brick-and-stone parody of any world I had ever known, with so many chimney-pots and roof-peaks looming dark against a lurid, vaporous orange sky. Lead-colored clouds hung low while the setting sun oozed molten light between them. The gothic towers of the city stood festive, yet foreboding against the glowering sky like candles on the devil's birthday cake. But in spite of all this darkness, the book is quite enjoyable on the adventure side because it skims and puts together a lot of concepts, ciphers, codes, cryptograms, language of flowers, etc. And through this book, the author essentially sets the stage for Enola. I think the books became popular because her character is quite relatable. But we also see that the world that she lives in is not quite ready for someone like her. The society will put a lot of obstacles in her path. So we get involved to understand the journey of this young girl as she tries to find a place for herself in the big wide world. She is very young, and although some of her actions are driven by slight misunderstanding of how older people, especially her brother Sherlock, speak about things or express themselves, the contemporary readers would recognize the inbuilt thirst she has to become her own person and carve her own path. So all in all, if you like young adventurers, then give this book a go. It is only a short read and will take a few hours of your time. We are quite looking forward to the next installment in this adventurous series and see how Enola grows up. And we will share our thoughts on the next book with you here. But until that time, thanks for tuning in today and look forward to see you next time. Thank you.